Hello, everyone. Um, welcome to this presentation. So we are today presenting here about the latest and greatest about Metal Cube project. So if you can't guess uh, from the names, who is who? My name is Kashif Khan. I am a maintainer in the Metal Cube project. And uh, besides, I also work for Ericsson. And I have with me, I, with me Hui, uh, my colleague. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Hui. Uh, I'm a teammate in Kashif. Yep. So those of you who aren't actually aware about what Metal Cube is or what Metal Cube does, uh, let me give you a quick recap. So Metal Cube is a project that brings uh, Kubernetes to uh, bare metal. Um, so it, it allows seamless uh, provisioning of uh, bare metal servers in Kubernetes, and it just treats your bare metal server just like a Kubernetes native object. And with the help of uh, Powerful tools like Ironic, it uh, automates the lifecycle management of uh, your bare metal server, and uh, it allows uh, or enables you to um, uh, deploy your workload uh, on hybrid, on edge, or even for high-performance uh, computing environments. Uh, Metal Cube came under the CNCF uh, umbrella in 2020 uh, as a sandbox project, and um, we are now currently at the top of the queue for assessment for being incubated, um, and hopefully we will be incubated uh, before the next KubeCon uh, in, in Europe. When it comes to uh, like uh, the growth, uh, since its inception, Met Metal Cube has been growing uh, our, um, um, its momentum quite steadily. It has um, quite like around 60 plus great uh, features that has been added. And um, our uh, release processes have been streamlined. Uh, we have strategically placed the, some of the components uh, releases uh, with the cluster API because we also have a cluster API provider for Metal Cube. Uh, one of the component, Ironic, is, is also loosely coupled with this uh, release of OpenStack Ironic. And then we have components like Bare Metal Operator, which has its own independent uh, release cycle. Um, we have uh, also grown uh, adapters. The, currently, we have uh, nine adapters uh, from different companies who are using um, a Metal Cube in production environment. I'll show the, the logo of the adapters in a moment. But we have also realized that there are other projects and, and companies who are also benefiting from, from Metal Cube. So if you are here and you have used Metal Cube, uh, please also make sure that you add yourself as in the adapters list. That would be a great um, help for the projects towards, towards uh, becoming it uh, as an incubated project. And all of these great, uh, great stuff are maintained by 16 uh, very talented and hardworking individuals that are working as maintainers, as well as there are reviewers from, from communities who are helping, to, helping us to make or take this project forward. So these are some of the companies, and you, as you can see, that uh, the adapters list itself shows that we have a wide gamut of, of, of companies, with, and these companies come from, from different uh, technological uh, corners of, of the community. So we have Ericsson, Red Hat, and SUSE, and then projects like Silva or Dashship who are using uh, Metal Cube in production. Um, it might come to your uh, sense that why actually Metal Cube uh, is beneficial. So there are some points here that highlights that why you should choose Metal Cube if you are thinking about deploying your bare metal server in Kubernetes. So first of all, as I've said, it, the, the most powerful thing about Metal Cube is that it has unified management. It treats your bare metal, bare metal server as a native Kubernetes object with the help of Kubernetes API. And thus, it allows you to actually uh, consider or, or, auto, or like uh, use your bare metal servers and manage your bare metal servers lifecycle just as you would do a virtual machine uh, lifecycle management. And um, for example, if you are uh, doing, um, like if you are uh, already doing some manual host installation, you can just forget about it because then Metal Cube takes, takes all these um, uh, OS installation and provisioning as well as doing these, um, these management of the lifecycle with uh, directly interfacing with the server's baseborne management controller. And while it does that, it supports uh, various um, interfaces like Redfish, IPMI, and IDREC, to na name some of them. And all of these features are actually making Metal Cube uh, usable and enabling you to use it for a fully compatible and high availability environment for resilient as well as uh, enterprise-grade uh, infrastructure. 
and thus uh, using Metal Cube, you can actually deploy your application, um, which are even like idle for low latency and high performance, like for edge deployments, as well as for high performance uh, AIML or HPC workloads, and of course also for hybrid and multi-cloud environments. I'll now ask Hui to take you forward to uh, give you some of the recent updates of this project. Yeah, so, uh, MetaCube is already um, product ready, but we are still working very hard to make it work uh, with as many use cases as possible and with as uh, many features as possible. So recently, we have uh, introduced provisioning with encrypted root and config drive partitions. Um, Ironic standalone operator, which is supposed to make configuring and installing Ironic much more easier. This is one of the uh, complaints that we receive over the years that Ironic is kind of difficult to to understand. So we try to make it as easy as for you as possible. Uh, we also added OFI boot support and uh, partial support for pre-positioning network configuration. Uh, otherwise, we continue um, make, making progress in uh, improving our stability, and uh, logging, hand, error handling, and testing. And last but not least, we now have the proper releases for all our core components. Um, next, I want, want to introduce you with one of the study that we recently made. Uh, so you know that in um, bare metals, it's very hard to load test because for, some, uh, for a simple reason, you cannot have that many uh, nodes to test. So we have people who come to us and ask, uh, this project looks cool, but I'm not sure if it can handle my workload. And normally we cannot say for sure because we have never tested it on that large number of nodes. So we gather a work, working group and we work on it for, for over a year and we develop uh, a way of simulating the nodes in a way that um, none of our core components understand that they are working with fake nodes. So we were able to uh, simulate and uh, provision 1,000 fake bare metal nodes to 1,000 single, single node uh, clusters. And that proves that uh, MediCube is quite ready for handling that many, um, that high workload. So the next time if somebody asks, hey, I have like hundreds of nodes in my lab, can you handle that? This is our answer. And what's next? We are also still working on multiple things, but most, uh, our, uh, the most outstanding of them will be the multi-tenancy, with copy multi-tenancy multi contract. Uh, uh, the next one would be to delegate the BMS man management, which means that uh, you can have the person who add the BMS and the person who use or consume the BMS are different people. So, for example, if uh, your company has like uh, many parameter nodes, you can have somebody who manages it and others who can, can consume. And the last is the DP, DSP less provisioning by using MetaCoop IPAM or IP address manager. Uh, how to get involved? Uh, you can, of course, go to talk to us on QoS 17B tomorrow from 10.45 to 3.15. And yeah, otherwise, there's the website, GitHub, Slack, YouTube, other things. Uh, thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Thank you.